Hello and welcome to the brand new course infrastructure testing. This is going to be the first module of many modules which are going to come together. Uh, over the next few videos and modules you're going to understand what are how to test, validate and secure your infrastructure as a code. As on first module we're going to start off with uh, the first section which is going to be introduction to infrastructure testing. Uh, before we jump on the code and hands on I just wanted to quickly take you through how infrastructure testing is evolving, how a few of the recent failures and how companies are kind of uh, utilizing plethora of tools available in the market to test and mock their infrastructure. So without further ado, let's get started. Before getting on to what actually is uh, infrastructure testing, let, let's probably take a look at a few of the recent scenarios in um, the past few months and years wherein big giants like Microsoft, AWS, uh, Google Cloud, Azure, have uh, seen few of the security breaches and majority of them if not all are because of the human errors they could have been avoided however because of the massive scale of their infrastructure and backend uh, manual testing or manual eyes on those uh, breaches were not possible and hence that led to the breaches which, could, which are like github account being hacked leaky AWS S3 buckets once again at the center of the data breach um, around Google Cloud uh, hackers found using Google Cloud to hide phishing attacks AWS breach again and Microsoft Azure breach left thousands of uh, customer records exposed now if you look at these errors look at these series of events uh, you would find that majority of them were because of the human errors because of the the lack of uh, production because of lack of of testing manual testing or in automation testing whatever it is uh, they could have been avoided I'm not saying that they 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 would have been absolutely possible to avoid them however they could have been avoided by certain means uh, and these means which we're going to talk about in the next few uh, videos and slides and probably help you understanding how infrastructure testing can really pay at, uh, pay pay good results for your infrastructure as well before getting on to the definition, few of the common infrastructure myths which uh, you might have listened to or, or you might face when you talk about infrastructure testing with you within your team. And these are majority of the DevOps folks think testing is only for software development and not for configuration or infrastructure as code. There's nothing much you can do once your infrastructure is deployed because once your infrastructure is deployed, what you're going to test? Either you create or destroy infrastructure, but there are a few of the other activities like modification and manual changes um, and, and uh, quick fixes are being applied in between create and destroying of your infrastructure as well. One of the biggest myths which I have seen, um, I've heard a majority of m in my career is a developer can only write infrastructure but because that actually requires you to write actual code in Golang or uh, any sort of uh, full-fledged programming language and we're going to bust all of these myths over the next few modules examples few that infrastructure example which can help you at least get the ball rolling and help you understand uh, what are the few of the examples top examples uh, which i have used in my infrastructure testing uh, i just wanted to show you and you folks could have also uh, could use them in your real life scenario at least to get started off with uh, one of the easiest way to get started with uh, all the cloud provider be it Amazon Azure or uh, GCP has tags or labels attached to every resource now this resource could be mach machine virtual machine a Kubernetes cluster databases storage IP address all of them can be can have a tags assigned to them now these tags talk about uh, what type of resources they are uh, which location they should be sitting in and these can be attached with them so that um, it can be beneficial when it comes to reporting because based on those tags you can pull out all those resources in a particular location or a p particular resource type and and can be benefit uh, generally they are helpful when it comes to reporting so that's one one thing you can always uh, one uh, use case you can always get started with your infrastructure testing a resource like machine or storage should exist what is mentioned in the code so whatever code you've written that kind of spins of certain virtual machine the storage is in this example however people tend to create manual resources as a part of their stories or activities or testing and they tend to forget them as well now if you have an infrastructure testing in place that 
testing script or testing job would run every time and kind of checks if whatever there is in your code should only exist and beyond that should be deleted because they are also not only um, uh, kind of doing the making the environment cumbersome but they are also incurring cost as well check no unwanted ip rules are present in the network security groups very common practice that people tend to leave um, multiple ip address or ciders like 10.0.0 or 0.0 slash .0, 0 and that kind of leaves your virtual network vulnerable so making sure an infrastructure testing script can always uh, help you detecting those unwanted rules or ip addresses right machine size or region is selected upon creation people tend to create different resources in different region and there should be an uniformity maintained across your resources and infrastructure testing can help you do that encryption is required in many of the resources to be enabled like databases or messaging solution make sure that your infrastructure testing kind of checks that after every deployment or commits Another example uh, would be could be secrets are purge protected in vaults and make sure that all your secrets are purge protected what in whatever vault you are keeping. So the big question what is infrastructure testing? To simplify it, it is the testing of the working code. Uh, a working code means any piece of code or configuration whatever you want to call uh, whatever you want to call uh, creates or, or modifies or edits an infrastructure should be testable now let's suppose you create a virtual machine now that virtual machine should be testable now like what do you want to test you test that virtual machine has the right size you test that your virtual machine has the right set of tags you make sure that if it's a it's a database server you don't want to expose it to public you want to make sure that ip address which are there in the source code should only be whitelisted these are the type of tests you you can run on your working code resource mocking you can mock a resource like load balancer virtual machine network and expect and behavior out of them and if whatever you have written down in your testing test cases those resources should be giving you back those results as well desired state um, infrastructure testing can be used to compare your actual and desired state as well because in between there might be users or developers or administrator who while debugging has leave your actual and desired state mismatch which can which can leave a lot of vulnerabilities open as well deploy it with confidence because after every environment let's suppose you've got three environment dev non prod and prod since you're running test automated test after every environment dev non-prod you're pretty confident if all of them passes that you're you're it's highly likely that your uh, infrastructure is code is pretty secure and you're deploying what you want to deploy without any glitches why should you do it because there are error due to last minute deployment and quick fixes as a devops and intra consultant uh, we rely on copy pasting or, or last minute fixes and that might help us in achieving the fix at that particular point of time however on a longer run that might not help us so infrastructure testing can help us um, because we've already defined what we want to see into our code be more confident we've already spoken about it because you're deploying your uh, infrastructure pretty frequently and you have your test right after every environment before going into the production gives you more confidence to deploy on the production without any issues detect and override manual unwanted changes people that's a very common practice when you do a story or any activity or debugging or troubleshooting something a broken cluster or, or, or a leaked database you you try to test different things by opening ports giving you giving access to the servers to the public you do those changes however after debugging you're happy once you're happy and your uh, your customers are also back on track you kind of forget to undo the changes which you've done and you don't keep a track of all the numerous amount of changes you've done only way to keep a track and fix them is using an infrastructure testing avoid common common errors which we generally see happens every day why should we de do in fact, uh, we've already discussed why should we test the infrastructure. Let's talk about when we should be doing the infrastructure testing. Whenever you're creating a new uh, infrastructure, new environment, probably provisioning a dev non-prod environment, could be n number of environments, or you applying a new 
patch or version update to your Kubernetes cluster. You should uh, do infrastructure testing in those scenarios. App deployment, uh, pretty important network changes. If you do any net sort of network changes, IP routing and anything, you should have your network uh, infrastructure change changes or testing as well security pretty important enabling any security feature or disabling anything make sure that your infrastructure testing is in place to to guard against your decision or with your decision rather so what are the type of test so generally they are smoke integration functional and then you've got a unit testing system integration test regression uh, we're not going to use all of them but if we have to talk about few of them with the common uh, testing strategy which we use in infrastructure are unit and integration unit are individual component which can be tested like a virtual machine could be individually tested or a virtual network could be individually tested and once um, all of them can be combined together they are called as integration test tools of the trade what are the tools we have in the market to test the infrastructure there are a plethora of tools available few of them are terraform specific because terraform is the leading infrastructure as a code tool in the market however few of them like inspeg gauss are pretty open source tool which means you can uh, they are not any tool specific or tool agnostic rather they are open to use for any of the tools like you can use it for ansible you could use it for uh, against pulumi or terraform as well however if you have the tool which are very specific to terraform are terraform kitchen a ruby based uh, uh, interpreter which can be installed in a system and used can be used to write test terra test again is an uh, is a tool or a set of libraries by a company called grant work written in golang so you need to have a bit of uh, knowledge about golang uh, what they've done is they've exposed certain modules which can be used uh, to mock your resources like uh, docker kubernetes on aws gcp or azure Inspec is one such tool which we're going to use in our demos uh, in upcoming videos. Uh, it's by Chef. Chef is a market leader uh, when it comes to compliance or auditing or uh, continuous integration and delivery tool. They have plethora of tools and Inspec is one of them which we're going to use as well. Goss is a, again YAML based, pretty easy to use uh, tool to validate your server configuration. Terraform compliance, pretty lightweighted. It, if you've, uh, if uh, uh, the viewers have used uh, Cucumber or Future Files. Terraform compliance are pretty much like that. You don't have to code. You don't have to write any any configuration. All you need to do is write feature files, uh, proper plain English. Uh, what you need uh, uh, to write. You generally start off with like I need uh, my virtual machine to be hosted in this region. That's how a Terraform compliance work. We're going to show you in a few of the upcoming videos as well. Ruby by Ter Terraform again, a simple wrapper around the Terraform binary to allow execution from within a Ruby program or egg file. All right, uh, that's pretty much all from this particular slide or rather deck. I just wanted to make sure that uh, before we jump on the demos, we have few of the fundamentals or ethos clear about uh, infrastructure testing and we kind of get a glimpse of what it can do and if not done right way, what it can do. We, we, we saw it using the recent failure example, then we saw when, where and why infrastructure testing can be helpful. A tool of the trade, um, we looked at few of the most uh, used available tools in the market and few of them we're going to use like soft terror test uh, chef inspect and many other as well all right that's pretty much all for now i'm going to see you in the next video wherein it's going to be a sl um, uh, going to be a slides again basis on which we're going to understand about continuous delivery as a culture before we get into the demo and hands-on i hope this was informative thank you i'll see you in the next video